So, hello everyone. Welcome back to the another session. I'm going to talk today about your path Phoebe apps latest update a uh, new feature. So today I will be talking about entity object and what is entity object and why do we need entity object and what is the use of entity object. So let me tell you guys if you are using legacy app and if you have experience on your path legacy app so you must be noticing that every your path apps pages have data context and data context is nothing where you can get the data so basically what you can do you can write a data context like lookup filter and then based on the id like uh, based on the any variable you can get the data and that data context you can use across the pages so let's say you have a kind of uh, name and then first name last name or start date and end date and you want to display that on page with existing data so what we do in generally into your path legacy app we create a record and then once we try to view the data so generally we pass the id into a variable and based on that we write our data context query like a lookup filter and then based on the id we get all the data back right as an object and then you can get you can use the data context property into variables and then you can set default value and you can display on the pages okay so now the data context is no more here so we we don't have data context so the problem is now occurs like how we can display the data on pages right so, they, so we have something good features into your path we app that is called entity object so what we what you can do you can create an object of entity type like suppose you have an entity and you have created an object with entity type. So once you created an object of entity type, you can use across the pages. So data context was only per page. And then this entity of this, uh, you can say entity type of app variable, you can use across the apps. Like suppose you have view or you have edit or you have update pages, right? And then what you can do, you can use that particular app variable across the pages so we will see how to how to use that right so you can see here there are a lot of app variables and one of the app variable we are going to talk about that will be kind of uh, entity object app variable okay list source is something different let's go there so i have one leave request application and now i have created one leave application uh, application and i want to view the details on view so basically i want to use how to use this one right so let's go here what we will do first we will what we will try to do we will try to create an entity which is into data service obviously we know that now what i will do i will add entity into the app right in app so let's go here into app variable so let's say i i want to create an app of entity type so basically what happens the moment you add any entity your entity will be appeared here so let's let me show you something so let's go here and let's select an entity here let's say i am selecting department okay so department and if i go here to create an object type of like entity app variables so app variable you can see here department so the moment you add an entity automatically into create variable the type of entity will come so you can select the type of in variable that is called department and then maybe you can just give some different name for identification so what i prefer var underscore department right so the moment you create where underscore department, see here, it create one app variable of type entity, okay? So now, now I have a page here. Let me run this one. So this is kind of a simple leave request application. And in this leave request application, what I'm trying to do, 
I'm trying to capture a leave request and then I want to view the leave request details on the page, right? So see, I have this one, one details like uh, one record. And now I want to edit this or I want to view into another page. So how can we do this, right? So what I can do, I can create a type, like if you see this one, this is type of leave request. You can see here, open expression. This is type of leave request. So now I can go here and let me go and create one variable, something called app variable underscore leave request. Okay. Now what I can do, I can go here back and type, I can select type equal to leave request. Okay. I selected, created. Now you can see app variable underscore leave request. Now here into main page, what we should do, either you can see it on the page label, either you can see it on click or change or anywhere, right? So now I'm going to set this app variable underscore leave request on select of this edit grid, right? So what I can do, I can go into events and there we have leave row selected. So what I can do, edit this. <clears throat> I can disable this one and I can say set value. And in set value, what should I do? Like say app variable underscore leave request and then save. And then in the value, what should I do? So basically you need to write expression like main page dot. So where it is, it is on edit grid, right? Edit grid dot. I can say selected item. So basically it will transfer the selected item row as an object to this app variable. Okay. So now the moment I click on this particular edit grid, it will transfer the one record as an object with op all the app variable context. And then you can store into this app variable underscore live request app variable right now what what we will do i will go into view request so now i have something called this view request and i want to display the data which is selected here right I, which is selected here like plan leave annual leave or something let's say let's go here start date now what i can say here i can go and then what i what i can do i can set app variable Leave request dot, I can say a start date, right? This is a start date. Now, similarly here in end date, end date what I can, sorry, let me do app variable, leave request dot start date, this is done. So similarly in end date, what I can do, I can, I can go here and then say app variable, leave request dot end, it right similarly now we have days right now in in days what i can say go to default text and in default text i can say app variable dot days right so this will not support because days is kind of a, a string and an integer and decimal so what i can do i can convert into two integer so now it is two integer right now this is something called tricky because because if i transfer this value of leave type type annual leave this will directly it will not work so basically basically if you go and save this and you can see this one so leave request sorry i have variable leave request dot you can say leave type right this one leave type so now if i just go and preview it So let's go and preview now. So now if I say click this one and then I can say view. See, now you can say start date. Start date is coming 3, 13 and 13. You can say 13, days is one days. You can say days is one days. 
and then leave type is not coming because this leave type is a kind of a lookup and drop down. So how, how can we do this? So for this one, there are something different you need to do. So let's go to leave type. Um, what I should do, go to default here. And then we need to write something like this. So what, what basically here we are trying to do with, if you remember, we have uh, something called in legacy, uh, lookup and then get the title based on the ID because ID, ID is saving into this lib request. So we have to go into another table and get the title based on that. So what, what here we are trying to do, we can say view because this is view request page, right? So we can say view request dot drop down wherever we are saving. So we can say drop down dot and we can save to data source. So data source dot data with dot where and this will look up in the function. This function will look up, look, uh, go into item and where it will say item dot id dot value equal to variable I can say app variable leave request dot. You can say leave title, leave, sorry, leave type, leave request dot leave type. Leave type is object. And then I can say dot id dot value. And then I can say the first or default. Okay. So basically what it is doing, it, it save the, it, it get the data from the title. Basically it is getting the ID and then making sure it is where condition. So basically it is saving on the drop down. So basically it's a page name, view request dot drop down dot data source. So, so we are trying to save the data on this data source, which is where we are writing a function on this particular item to get the value based on the kind of lib request type. So basically it is saying item dot id did value in this item go one by one where app variable dot lib request dot leave type dot id dot value. So where it will match, right? Basically this data source have multiple records. So it will go one by one, one, by one and it will get the matching record. And then it will say first or default. So it will it will save to the first or default. So first record, right? So now if you save it, and now it, let's go and run. So now if I go and say click this view. So now you can see in one view. So basically, this is just we are using we are, we are, what we are using. We are just using the app variable. So in in this video, what we learned we learned how to create a entity type app variable and when entity type app variable we can create and then how to use entity type app variables and then how to set the value and how to transfer the data to the entity type and then how to set the value for lookup or you can say drop downs. And, and then how to display the records while you are viewing the data or editing the data or anything else. Okay, guys, thank you for watching.